guys still filming this camera. Yeah, but I'm about ready. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't used, used to work in here lately, or you? No, I'm sure not. Delegate things. I sure am. <laughs> uh, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> Last night at approximately 11:36 p.m., the Houston County Sheriff's Office received a call of a possible shooting that had occurred at Teaser's nightclub which is located in the Wicksburg community in the extreme westernmost uh, part of Houston County. When deputies arrived on the scene, they found that there were several gunshot victims and uh, one suspect had been described as being the perpetrator in this, this extremely heinous act at this location last night. Ended up we had four individual victims that were shot. Uh, three of these victims sadly did not make it. They succumbed to their injuries and are deceased fourth victim in this case uh, received moderate injury, injuries and uh, not expected to be life-threatening at this point. Uh, we do have a suspect in custody. Uh, the suspect left the scene last night on foot, left his vehicle there, and through some other investigative methods we determined the identity of the suspect and uh, began a manhunt. We had our, our canine tracking teams, our bloodhounds on the scene. We had our Joint Aviation Task Force in the air last night. Uh, we had uh, every investigator that works for the Houston County Sheriff's Office on the scene last night and uh, began tracking this suspect and, and investigating this uh, very huge crime scene. As you can imagine, a huge crime scene when you got four, four victims, uh, multiple locations within the structure where the shootings have taken place. you got the suspect's vehicle and you're trying to conduct a manhunt at the same time. Uh, We'd also like to thank the Dothan Police Department who provided several officers to help us uh, set up a perimeter last night. Uh, also want to thank the Enterprise Police Department for running down some leads on the suspect's residence and Enterprise. And we also want to thank the Dale County uh, Sheriff's Office too for their support last night. And we do have this one suspect in custody. He was taken in custody right around 7 a.m. this morning uh, within a quarter mile of the uh, nightclub. And we have in custody Ryan Clark Peterson. He's a 22-year-old white male from Enterprise, Alabama. Uh, we are satisfied that there are no other suspects, no other perpetrators in this crime, and we are satisfied that we have the weapon that was used in the, in the crime. Have you heard anything as to why he did this? Uh, from witness accounts and uh, interviews that we've done, that there was an altercation inside the club with some of the club uh, employees, and uh, he was escorted from the club. Whenever he was uh, asked to leave the club, they escorted outside. Uh, subsequently, he went to his vehicle, retrieved a handgun, and returned to the club. Uh, the first victim he shot just outside the, the front door of the club. And then he proceeded into, inside the nightclub and where he shot the other three victims. Were, were they male, female? Uh, three male victims and one female victim. And who are among the dead? Is it? Three males that are dead, or we've got two males and one female that are deceased. The so names? Yes, yes, they are. And if you want me to give you those at the end, I'll just read them off, and y'all can write those down. Okay. Whatever. Right. How did you find him? Where? What condition was he in when you found him? The suspect. Yes, sir. Uh, the suspect was in. Uh, he was in a in an area that was very thick undergrowth. Uh, he was. Uh, he had lost his shoes, lost his shirt. Uh, he was in pretty bad shape. After the chase and the manhunt last night, and he, he pretty much, whenever he saw the woman coming up on him, he, he stood up and, and gave himself up. What's his criminal background? Uh, criminal background at this point, all that we can tell was that uh, he's had some some misdemeanor crimes uh, related to alcohol. That's all we have right now. But the handgun that he used was legally purchased uh, through a, a federally licensed firearm dealer. When you interrogated him today, Sheriff, did he, uh, uh, what basically, did he admit to it? Did he show remorse? What was his demeanor today during the investigative process and the interview process? Uh, we did take a statement from the suspect, but we're not going to release the details of that statement this time. That's a matter for the court. Can you tell us about what charges he may be facing at this time? At this time, he's facing three counts of capital murder and one count of attempted murder. And we are asking for no bond on this charge, which I do believe uh, we will get. The one that's in the hospital, what kind of conditions he in? He had an injury, a, a, a gunshot wound to the arm. Were what? these people, were these people the targets, or did he just like open fire? Uh, well, 
it's hard to tell at this point. Uh, he really didn't have a relationship with any of these people that were in the club. This was not some type of preconceived uh, plot to go in and start killing people, you know, in, in this business. Uh, he, uh, he just went back in the club after he was asked to leave from the club and started firing. Were any of those people uh, employees of that club? Two of the victims, two of the dead are, are club employees. Sheriff, this is not the first time we've had incidents at Teasers. Uh, you got any idea now about uh, what may be become of this place? Are you going to uh, tighten up on them some, or maybe just see about shutting it down altogether? Or is that even a possibility? Well, that's, you know, that, that's something that we may look at. We have had uh, quite a few calls out there. Most of them have been minor in nature, though, up and up until this point, and uh, something we'll look at. And uh, you know, the county commission issues those. License, ABC board issues liquor license. The county commission uh, agrees to issue the license. You know, recommend to the ABC board that the license be issued. So uh, that would be a matter for them. The sheriff's office cannot revoke uh, a business license or a liquor license. Can you go back in history and tell us mm -hmm. this, as far as the number of fatalities involved? How long has it been since we've had a crime of this magnitude in the county? Right. 1996, when I was working with Dothan PD, we had a, a triple homicide on Sturgeon Court here on the uh, north side of Dothan, inside the circle. And uh, this is uh, the second triple homicide that uh, I've been personally involved in during my career. Are those two dead employees the men? One male, one female. Do you know uh, uh, how many shots were fired during this incident? A total of nine shots were fired. Best we can tell. Was there, were those all by hand? Was there any reason to believe there was any other gunfire involved? Well, you know, let me back up just a second. We'll go ahead and, and put this out. The owner of the club, he lives at the rear of the resident or the rear of the nightclub. Uh, after he did hear that there had been a shooting at the nightclub, uh, matter of fact, one of the victims, the first victim in this case, was the club owner's son who was shot and killed. Uh, he had heard that there had been a shooting at the club. He come out of his residence located behind the, the nightclub, and he saw the suspect at his vehicle, and he fired two to three rounds from his handgun toward the suspect. And uh, we do believe at this point that that's what made the suspect vacate the vehicle, not try to leave in his vehicle, and fled on foot. Was that included in the nine shots, or that seven no, shots? No, that's separate. So the suspect involved in the triple homicide fired a total of nine rounds. Do you know if the suspect will have his initial appearance today before the court, or will it be Monday? I don't know. It could possibly be Monday. They may hold, may hold some first appearances this afternoon, though. Yeah, it's a very, very, very tragic event. Uh, you know, we want to sit around and think, uh, you know, how can we have prevented this? And uh, uh, most of the time in these type of cases, there's not a whole lot that uh, anybody can come up with that uh, would have prevented this type of crime from happening. You know, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of people who cry gun control, gun control. Uh, I don't believe that gun control is, is the answer in this case myself personally. I definitely believe in the Second Amendment and a person's right to bear arms. Uh, but uh, it just kind of leaves you shaking your head. It's uh, totally, totally senseless. Uh, these individuals uh, really had no relation to this guy, may not have ever seen him before last night. And uh, you know, after this happened, we've, we've got three people that are dead. We've got uh, multiple families that are affected by the deaths, deaths of these individuals. The suspect's family, who had nothing to do with this crime whatsoever, are, are, are affected also. So it's just, just very tragic all the way around. Any idea, was he a frequent? Hatred of this business? Uh, we we don't want to. I mean, we don't know for sure. Uh, 